Chris Oldman, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Field Service News. There's been a huge amount of mergers and acquisitions activity within our market across the last couple of years. We saw Core Systems recently acquired by SAP. Of course, GE Digital acquiring ServiceMax made huge news across the world for the sheer eye-watering almost $1 billion that they invested, a clear indicator of just how important service has become in the global economy. Um, but a lot of these organisations they're tending to focus on the larger field workforces, companies with 300, 500, 800 or more service engineers. But who's looking after those organisations that perhaps have 15, 20, maybe 30 field service engineers? I know for a matter of fact that there's a huge amount of companies with smaller workforces. And I also know that the, the solution provider marketplace for those organisations is very, very fractured. But one company that's trying to resolve that is Norwegian-based Asolvi. Now Asolvi may be a new name for many of you, uh, but perhaps some of the constituent names are Vatic, Winserve or Tesseract, a company very well known here in the UK for innovation, uh, may be more familiar. Asolvi is the bringing together of these three organisations. I talked to their CEO, Paul Rostev, to find out more about the new brand, to find out what their plans are moving forwards and how they're working bringing these two together to bring uh, a solution that's dedicated to the SMB sector across Europe. Paul, thanks for joining us. Um, first things first, I think, we, we obviously we spoke some time ago, maybe two years ago it was, when Tesseract uh, were acquired and you were CEO of Avatic at that point. Um, since then, you, there's, it seems that the new brand, Asolvi, uh, there's quite a lot of thinking that's gone into it. I can see from the design, from the logo, it seems very constructed. Uh, maybe you can just start by telling us a little bit more about Asolvi. I'm, I'm glad you uh, you think that there's some thinking behind it because it, it certainly is. Um, you, you're quite right in in your uh, in your start there. The, uh, Asolvi today consists of three products, I would say, uh, and it consists of three companies that have come together to to one company. Um, just after the, the uh, Tesseract acquisition in 2016, uh, we started the process of thinking who are we going to become when we grow up? Uh, and uh, it was wrong to name the company after one product. Sure. Um, so we started a process uh, that uh, eventually ended in the visual design, the graphical design mm -hmm. you can see around us, uh, and the new name. Uh, we had a lot of criteria for the new name, um, and uh, eventually it ended up in Asolvi. Asolvi is supposed to give you association to solving problems, okay. uh, and that's what we do every day from customers. Uh, we had certain requirements on, on the naming, on the .com mm -hmm. domain, uh, and uh, the name is, as you can see, constructed, yeah. uh, and is unique. Uh, and uh, we're going to fill meaning into the name is Solvi as we keep on building the company. Uh, is, is, is that why there's the two segments that remain? Because we've got the lovely little graphic that sits above the eye. Is that, is that representative of Space for Future Growth? Um, it represents uh, the various um, products and companies that, that mm. uh, merged into become a Solvi. Yeah. If you remember Tesseract, yes. it had a cube or a Tesseract uh, yes. as, as part of the symbol. Uh, Avatic had uh, triangles as part of the symbol, as you can see. Mm. And um, in a similar way, uh, Vinserve had squares. Okay. So we tried to combine what were in the, the old product names into uh, uh, the new identity and the new, um, so to say, visual identity. And as you can see, you can twist the cube and, uh, around. Uh, you can see the cube in it. You can see um, triangles and you can yeah. see squares. And there's pl plenty of ways to manipulate that uh, symbol for further products that uh, will join the group. Okay, um, what other point on that as well? Um, the name itself, obviously we're speaking in English, it translates very easily in, into English. It strikes me as something that will be quite easily translated across various European languages. And I know that's part and parcel of, of the project that you guys are undertaking here, is to kind of build a, a co cohesive brand that kind of builds upon upon the strengths of the components and is um, you know more of a European reaching brand. 
and uh, each of the individual components. Was that part of the full process as well? The fact that Solvi will work in Norwegian and English and Swedish and perhaps in French and etc. elsewhere? We, we've obviously had that as one of our criteria. Um, we do have a pan-European yeah. approach to what we do. Uh, and uh, the name uh, should work in, in any languages we have uh, and we were quite uh, firm that we wanted a .com domain yeah. and not an individual country domain. Um, we still believe that the uh, service management software industry in Europe is too fragmented. Mm -hmm. There's too many, too small players that will not be able to take the technology shift that the customers require. Uh, so we do expect to continue the consolidation in the industry and we, we do want to be the leading force uh, doing so. To take that point, um, by bringing these three companies together, you've been able to obviously broaden each organization's reach across Europe. And as you say, it's this very pan-European uh, focus that you have now. Um, have you found any unexpected challenges in specific Different geography, different geographies, nationalities, etc. In terms of the customer expectations, are there regional differences um, that you may not have anticipated, or that you find as a challenge at all? Um, we're seeing certain regional, uh, what I would call challenges. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we have expanded uh, the test rate product into to uh, Europe, yeah, uh, and we're we're starting off in Scandinavia first. Uh, we're seeing that we're getting quite some, some um, customer, uh, what I should say, input into the products. Mm. Um, the, the specifically the mobile aspect of yeah. our solutions, uh, there's quite a high standard for, for what we need to achieve in the Nordics. Uh, and I think that is uh, giving us valuable input to product development uh, in, in the, the next uh, version of Service Center. Uh, that we'll, we'll start to see uh, coming out late this year. Um, but I think also we're seeing um, a good chance to, to harmonize a lot of the products as we go forward. Um, we're currently rolling out uh, a new help desk solution which is based on Sendesk, mm -hmm. um, which will be offered to, to uh, our new products to, uh, all over the, the Solvi brands. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, is showing that actually the um, the sum of the parts is, is bigger uh, yeah. together than it is on their own. Well, you mentioned the unexpected bonus there of having that wider database and the, the information being fed back, that kind of feedback loop being increased, I guess. Um, I suppose a natural evolution of that, and something I'd be keen to find out a little bit more about, is having the, ex the expanded customer base. Are you able to kind of utilise that? Do you have plans to utilise that to be able to identify best practices across different markets, across different geographies, and, and share that uh, with your with your own customer base. So it's kind of improving their service delivery, improving your own service delivery, and of course, always tweaking the technology as well. It gives us a better chance to calibrate our products to what the customer wants. Mm. Obviously, the, the uh, key driving force behind uh, the Tesseract acquisition was to take the product out from a mainly UK-centric yep. uh, customer base. Uh, to expand it into Europe because it is a cloud-based solution and has a lot of good functionalities uh, and, and we believe it's, it's way ahead of a lot of the, the European competitors. Yeah. Uh, still, um, there are competitors out there and we need to benchmark up against them. And just as I said, when it comes to the mobile functionality, we're getting mm -hmm. very useful input to, to your product roadmap uh, by having a broader uh, customer uh, base. Okay. What are the challenges that many organisations that um, perhaps, like, like yourselves, have quite um, aggressive acquisitive nature or have a, a, a very uh, acquisitive strategy um, face, and I've seen this across a number of different industries, is that ability to kind of focus on the things that made them perfect, they were very strong what they did in the first place. Now, the, the three organisations, uh, Vatic, Vinserv and Tesseract, who kind of served, especially Vatic, and Windsor served the, the document management sector very, very well. Um, Tesseract has been very much geared towards the SMB focus sector. Um, is, is that going to be a core focus for you moving forward, is to continue to kind of serve that smaller that, those smaller service organisations? You know, and is, is that a fear that as, the, the, as your brand grows, um, that, that might get diluted at all? 
Our key market is uh, European SMEs, yeah, uh, okay. and we will continue to focus on European SMEs. Mm -hmm. Uh, an SMB in, in the UK is slightly different than an SMB in the Nordic. They, they tend to be slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're not going to go after the, the, the large enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, we do happen to have some large enterprise customers, uh, some for historic reasons, some for uh, specific functionality reasons yeah. that we can provide them. But our key target market uh, is SMB and will continue to be so. Okay. Um so let's talk about the SMBs. I mean, what, what should service organizations with those smaller service um, workforces, how should they prioritize um, the technology that they, they are seeking to implement in order to make sure that they can sit on an equal footing when competing with those companies that are in the enterprise side? I think the most important thing for, for a, a, a service company is to focus on their operational procedures. And I think that is the key thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer a, a decision support system, an, an operational decision support system, but they need to have their operational procedures in place. Uh, and that's something that the system can, can support, but the system in itself will not make you uh, have a perfect service organization. Yeah. Uh, and often do we see, um, un, what should I say, unrealistic expectation for what the system can do. But if you don't have your procedures in place, the system will never, uh, never get get over and, and being better than any kind of operational procedures. Um, the systems we sell and implement are complex operational uh, products, uh, and it's important to be realistic when you implement these solutions, um, as as they they tend to live with you for a long period of time. But as we we do need to be able to to crawl uh, before we can walk and before we can run. The same, the same goes for our customers. They need yeah. to be able to implement it and build on it uh, over time. Mm -hmm. So providing professional support over the lifetime of the customer is something we're spending more and more time on to help our, help our customers drive a more profitable and, and better service organization. Absolutely. And to go back to that again, it's this opportunity for shared learnings that perhaps Smaller companies don't get the opportunity so much to have, especially when they're working with smaller uh, service management solution providers, because it's just that smaller pool. Um, so I think it's really interesting to see how these companies can benefit altogether from being in the same shared space. Is that something you're seeing? We, we're seeing quite, quite a lot of that, actually. And our latest acquisition being WinServe in, in Sweden in, in the fall of 2017, what we see from and, and what we, uh, the rest of the organization has learned from Windsor is their way to implement new customers. Uh, they've been very effective in getting the customers up and running much quicker than the Avatic and the Tesseract side. Mm -hmm. So the organization is learning from, from uh, what they've been done uh, well mm -hmm. to see how we can implement that in, in the, the other organizations. Um, in a similar way, uh, product development is now centered around core functionality for the group not around a single product itself. Mm. We are uh, designing and building a new contract engine, and that's going to be an engine that works for all the products, independent okay. on, on which solution you run today. Um, and, and that's how we're gonna reinvent the Asolvi product portfolio, by being able to offer best of breed solutions mm. uh, for service organizations, uh, based upon the now 750 plus customers we have in 30 odd countries around the globe. There's a lot of learning uh, yeah. in those customer base um, to be able to provide tomorrow's solutions. Okay, Paul, and uh, one final question from me. Um, it's been a pretty phenomenal, some might say, Herculean effort that you guys have gone through in the last couple of years, bringing together three companies, three separate uh, or countries of origin um, to come together under the one umbrella. And it seems like, from what you're saying, you're already starting to see some of the fruits of that hard work already coming together. But I remember when we spoke a couple of years ago, it was a very clear plan that you had. It was to build a network of organizations, essentially, across Europe that could serve the small to medium-sized market. Um, what's the next scoop for Field Service News? How far down that line are you? Um, you know, is it continued expansion or is it time to take a little bit of a breather? What can you tell us about the next few steps for a Solvi? Um, 
we, we believe and we continue to believe that there's too many too small players. Mm. Uh, a lot of them might, might do well today, uh, but we see the demand that our customers are putting on us as a software developer uh, and being able to spread those development resources among 750 customers is, is a different thing than spreading them around 100. Um, we expect the consolidation to continue and we want to be uh, the driving force behind that European consolidation. So uh, I hope to sit here the next time and talk about the next acquisition we've done because we do expect to do so. Uh, when that happens and if that happens, who knows. Uh, uh, now we are as a group much better prepared to do it than we were both when we did the WinServe acquisition and the, the uh, Tesseract acquisition. We are now a Solvi uh, and a Solvi is the sort of say umbrella uh, for future products and companies uh, to join under. Uh, we have systems in place, uh, we've done accusations twice. Yes, we made our mistakes and I'm sure we will make new mistakes, uh, but we learn from it and that makes us better as an organization. Uh, it makes us better to, to uh, provide new products and to serve the larger uh, community of customers that we, we have in the group. Excellent. Well, Paul, I look forward to sitting down and talking about that next acquisition next time around. But for now, real pleasure speaking to you. Thanks again. Thank you, Chris. Look forward to be back.